Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCS EPE lesson, part one of topic 7.2 on the methods of training. As always, you'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your exam, and today you need to be able to outline the first four training methods and the activities involved, and link the training methods to improvements in different areas of fitness. Training method one, continuous training. Continuous training is performing large compound movements such as running, cycling or swimming continuously or without rest periods. Continuous exercise needs to be sustained for a minimum of 20 minutes if it's to be effective and intensity is set according to heart rate which should be kept between 65 and 85% of your maximum. Remember heart rate can be calculated by using the equation 220 minus your age. Continuous training improves both stamina and muscular endurance and is therefore used by aerobic athletes including marathon runners, cyclists, swimmers and games players. Advantages of continuous training include that it can be used for a variety of activities and is easily adaptable, it requires little equipment and can be done almost anywhere and it reduces your risk of developing chronic diseases such as heart disease. Continuous training can be boring or tedious however and it lacks specificity for games players as it doesn't include changes in speed or direction. For safety reasons, it's also really important that you use appropriate footwear if running for long durations. Training method two, fartlek training. Fartlek is another form of continuous training as no rest periods are taken. Fartlek is the Swedish word for speed play and is therefore characterized by variations in pace and or terrain. Common methods include cycling, rowing and running and a typical fartlek circuit could include sections for sprinting, jogging, hill climbs and ascents. Intensity is monitored using Borg's RPE scale, which allows you to make an estimate of your current work rate. Just like continuous training, fartlek can help you improve both cardiovascular and muscular endurance, but unlike continuous training, it targets both aerobic and anaerobic fitness and is therefore often used by games players who rely heavily on both. Advantages. It can be done almost anywhere, it requires little or no equipment, and variation in pace and terrain means tedium is less likely to occur. However, training intensity is difficult to monitor, and the RPE scale is subjective, which makes it difficult for athletes to apply overload. Training method three, plyometric training. Plyometric training involves explosive exercises such as squat jumps, box jumps, or clap push-ups, and is used to develop power. When performing a plyometric exercise, it's essential to include an eccentric or preloading phase where the muscle lengthens briefly before shortening and exploding upwards. Plyometric training is used by athletes such as triple jumpers as they rely on explosive movements to be successful. People using this training method need to take care, however, as the high levels of stress placed on the muscles increases the risk of picking up an injury. Training method four, weight training. Weight training exercises use external weights as a resistance to work against and weights come in two categories. Free weights, which include dumbbells, barbells and kettlebells and machines. A rep is a single lift, for example one bicep curl, while a set consists of a number of reps completed in one go without rest. For a given exercise, someone using weight training will typically perform several sets with rest periods between each. Now weight training can be used to target several components of fitness, including strength, muscular endurance and power. Those who wish to target strength should lift more weight but complete fewer repetitions per set, while those focused on muscular endurance should increase the number of reps per set and reduce the weight lifted to accommodate for this. Advantages Specificity can easily be applied as athletes can adapt their sessions to focus on the components of fitness and muscle groups required by their sport. It's also very easy to show progression as the weight you're capable of lifting for a given exercise increases over time and is very easy to monitor. Disadvantages. Weight training may not be accessible for all as gym fees can be expensive and specialist equipment may be required. The high levels of stress placed on the muscles also carries a significant injury risk so you need to make sure you warm up thoroughly and have a spotter present for safety reasons. Now we've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on the first four methods of training. Make sure you come back next time for part two where we'll study the two remaining training methods and take a look at the benefits of high altitude training for endurance athletes. As always I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you in the next one.